I was gonna try to make a video here of uh, some of the items that are I know of that are required for a uh, pass a Coast Guard safety inspection. Um, we were just boarded last week, uh, routine safety check, and uh, fortunately we had everything that we were required to have. Um, it's different requirements, and I'm. You know, I'm just kind of saying this by memory, and I'm not going to be able to edit the video, so I'm just going to kind of show you some of the items that I know of that boat on a vessel of over 16 feet is required to have. So I have some different items laid out here. On the left side is what's required, and on the right is items that I find helpful or think you should have. So first of all, of course, the life jackets. Um, and I only bought out one size here. This is a child's medium and they have to be size appropriate. If I were to get the adult out, you'd notice it's a bit larger. Um, also, you have to have either a throw ring or a, uh, what do they call it? A throwable device. Um, and it has to be in good condition. These cushions count as a throwable device um, and replace their throw ring. And uh, also fire extinguishers that have to be uh, mounted. Um, and they also have to be, as seen there, uh, Coast Guard approved. But if you notice, it says valid only with bracket. So that meaning that band and the mounting bracket there. This is the spare. Um, we have another one under the helm that's mounted. Um, you'll also need uh, flares. I believe three day and three night or combo. Um, I believe this qualifies. And you, the expiration dates, usually they're good for about three years. It's actually written on the rounds themselves. I don't know, you can't really see, but. Um, so. And you also have to have, uh, you know, the kit actual launcher device here which is similar to a pistol it just loads in like a shotgun shell now these are last these these expired last year and you don't have to take them um, it's good to have extras but you can't store them if I remember correctly in the same container um, legally because um, the potential to grab the outdated ones in a you know in a a stressful situation so but they you should have extras um, but you just can't store them in with the valid dated ones now also there's a some uh, noise you know whistles for signaling devices but also should have a foghorn or a horn on the boat but you have to have a, a sound you know making device you have to have your valid uh, registration um, your registration numbers on the vessel. Uh, you also have to have your ID, driver's license, not particularly your boaters. There's, you know, different states have different requirements, but you have to have your photo ID. Um, so then there's some items I consider pretty much essential. Um, you have, we have a spotlight on the boat itself that's uh, remote control, but having this uh, LED which is inexpensive and extremely bright handheld it's uh, just very agile to be able to point at different uh, channel markers and stuff um, much faster than messing with a joystick for the control and then uh, these emergency blankets I carry everywhere that those big foil blankets and they hold in body heat and they're good for you know, signaling because they're a bright piece of mylar. They're large too. I mean, you can pretty much wrap one or two people in them. And uh, oh, they're trying to cross the bar over there. <laughs> um, and I like uh, having you know multiple sources of light. The glow sticks here, but I definitely advocate for some sharp knives aboard. Um, you never know what you need it for. Um, this here is I consider it actually better than a life vest because it gets worn more often. This is a Coast Guard approved float coat. It's a type 3 um, PFD. Uh, this is a and on it here is a water activated strobe 
um, which was relatively inexpensive. This is made by Mustang Survival. This is a catalyst coat, uh, much more um, agile than the older models. Um, warm, breathable, dry. That was a good buy. Um, and so, also, uh, I would say you really should have one of these Pelican or some type of dry case for your phone um, because if you were to have, you know, get in rough weather or get upset or something, have the boat get tossed um, unexpectedly, you know, loose items fly and that would be a cell phone. So, um, and so this is also um, our boarding report, which was, uh, if you see there, fortunately. Uh, no violation issued and they indicated that it should we be boarded again to present that paperwork immediately because I imagine it will save them um, time of having to go over things since we've already been gone over and that's good for six months to a year um, to be presented um, as evidence of uh, meeting safety requirements. So uh, that's just a quick video that I wanted to make and I'm not, you know, this is for recreational boating. Um, the requirements are different for boats of smaller and larger sizes. Um, depending on where you're boating, the requirements are different. Um, it's pretty rough outside the point right there. The tide is really ripping. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, going through all your safety equipment, knowing where it is, um, reading up and asking. Um, you know, there's a lot of information online to find out what you're required to have, and if you're in doubt, call uh, call the Coast Guard and speak with them. But um, make uh, boarding much uh, more pleasant experience if you know where all your equipment is and it's all current. So, all right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll let you go, and I'll stop bebobbing around here. But all right, be safe out there and. Get out and enjoy some of this beautiful scenery, huh? Bye.